Bullet Train. So Bullet Train is a Hollywood adaptation based on the 2010 Japanese novel called Maria Beetle. It was published later on into English as Bullet Train. So I thought to myself in preparation for watching this that it was going to be a Hollywoodized version of a different part of the world, that it was going to be a homage to Japanese action films, but also to like Japanese martial arts and just the general Japanese culture. The ensemble cast looks absolutely terrific. The director is really good at what he does, as he's previously done action films in the past, and it just seemed like pure entertainment, so I thought I'd definitely need to check this one out. So Bullet Train follows ex-assassin Ladybug, who returns to work as he is sent by his handler to retrieve a briefcase. This goes a little pear-shaped, as Ladybug's latest mission puts him on a collision course with other assassins who have missions of their own, all on the world's fastest train. So when you watch the trailer and understand the context of the film, it has a lot to offer in an entertainment sense that it's going to, you know, through the visuals and through the cinematography, that's just going to be overloaded with so much content that it will just be pure entertainment from start to finish. And the film was directed by David Leach, who has previously done John Wick, despite being uncredited for it, Deadpool 2, and Fast and Furious presents Hobson Shaw. So he's got a bit of a resume as far as action films are concerned. And I thought his approach to this film was very unique because he really unraveled his own unique visionary style in this film. I mean, the cinematography speaks for itself. It's just absolutely dazzling. It really is. It's almost futuristic, something like off Blade Runner or something. But the point of it was to really capture the Tokyo atmosphere and just the general Japanese culture. So in that respect, the cinematography is genuine and respectful to the culture of where it's set. And it also makes the film a visual spectacle and just a pure delight to just watch. And besides the cinematography, there were also a lot of other production techniques that were used in this film that really capitalised on that, such as by using on-screen text, especially when introducing the characters' names, you know, like the wolf and the father and Ladybug. They've got the English text, but also they've got the Japanese underneath it as well. So it does tie in nicely between English and Japanese. I also really love the incredible use of the slow motion effects as well, which always play an integral part in action sequences and just feeling that emotion during an intense moment on part of the characters and also the soundtrack was something that was a great asset to it as well and as I mentioned before I knew that it was going to be a film for just pure entertainment and if I'm being honest I was just expecting it to be like a brainless action comedy that will just have that as its strongest point but there were some things in the story that were extrapolated and unraveled that made it more emotional that enhanced the characters a bit more and drove the narrative forward like the Bolivian and the Japanese backstories and that's what opened up what I feel was the biggest theme in the film which was fate because ties and connections go a bit deeper than it just being about a group of assassins from different backgrounds and who are on different missions but happen to be on the same train so in that sense I thought the story was a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be and it was intense to watch because it was just fun and throughout a lot of this film it was quite intense because it was taking place on a train at a very fast pace and they were kind of trapped and that enhanced the suspense between the characters and also they've got to keep up false pretenses because they're on a train and it's a very public environment so I think that's where a large portion of the humour lies and I think the humour played a big part in this as well because it wasn't constant constantly funny because it was just a fine balance between it being intense and you know brutal but also it had some moments of where it was funny and that enhanced the entertainment factor and that made the audience enjoy it even more. Now onto the performances and despite the whitewashing accusations that have been made against this film I at least thought the performances in this adaptation were all very good. What's interesting is that they don't have any like official names they're just known by their code names. And in the leading role was Brad Pitt, who plays an ex-assassin who went by the name of Ladybug. And Ladybug is somebody who often mocks himself. He doesn't take himself all too seriously. But equally, as an ex-assassin, he's a master at his craft. And I think Brad Pitt has called him pretty much everything he's ever done in his whole career. And this one is no different because he really balanced that humour with also that badass kind of attitude. And that's why I think he really matched well with this character. A surprisingly good entry to this film was Joey King, who plays Assassin the Prince, which that itself is interesting because she's a girl and her code name is the print which is obviously male and there are two sides to her character and it leaves an important message don't misjudge a woman's potential innocence just by what she looks like because you don't know who she really is in fact that's just anybody in general that is of course because she wore pink and posed as a schoolgirl, and it really worked well with this character because she was actually very manipulative and joey king delivered a really good performance 
I think the standout performer for me was Aaron Taylor Johnson as assassin known as the Tangerine. And what I loved about Taylor Johnson from the word go was that he plays a character who just has a very witty sense of humour for someone who's meant to be a villain. And it's those kind of characters that work in a film like this. And while the character does show intimidation, he also shows weaknesses as well through acting angry and frustrated with his surroundings. And that's what plays into the humour of the character and the film in general as well. And credit to Aaron Taylor Johnson because we've seen him in so many different diverse roles over the years where he's played a superhero and he's played a psychopath and he is an exceptional actor and I would say that this is probably his most comical performance to date. Another performance I really loved as well was Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon who is another assassin and an associate of Tangerine. And before I talk about the character I will say he perfected the British accent really really well. I know Aaron Taylor Johnson's British but as an American did a really good job and like I said Lemon is an assassin but he's interesting because he strangely has a fascination with Thomas the Tank Engine which is also ironic because he's on a train and the chemistry that he had with Taylor Johnson was absolutely hilarious and I just loved the wit and just the emotional drama and that relationship that they had together and them two together really made the humour for me and also Hiroyuki Sanada and Andrew Koji also delivered fantastic performances too as codename characters the elder and the father and it was their emotional performances that really tied in the context of the story to the eventual climax so as many action sequences and comedy moments there were in the film they they were the ones driving the emotion forward. And there were some other great cameos in this film as well. So Bullet Train overall didn't really surprise me that much from an entertainment point of view because I knew from the trailer, from the promotional artwork and everything else that it was just going to be pure entertainment from start to finish and that's exactly what it was. And for me, the story surprisingly was quite deep and I wasn't really expecting it so that's enhanced my enjoyment of the film as well. And Bullet Train also pays homage to Japanese culture in a somewhat similar way to how Kill Bill did it. So I think if Tarantino has watched this, I'm sure he'd be proud of the film as well. If there's a particular criticism that I've got in relation to this film, it's that the pacing between the second act and the third act was quite slow and it just didn't take enough time to take off and it was very fast paced from the very beginning up until that point and then it slowly dropped a little bit and then it suddenly erupted again so that was the only thing I would say but again it was thoroughly entertaining which comes as no surprise given the director the humour worked really well somewhat like an Edgar Wright film and as it's an action film involving assassins it was also really brutal as well so what did you think of Bullet Train did you enjoy it did you not enjoy it let me know in the comments below and as always if you did go on to enjoy this video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more and have a notification bell tick so you're notified when I upload a new video and I'll catch you in the next one take care everybody